Welcome back, everyone. A new book is shedding light on what it means to live as an undocumented immigrant here in the United States. It's titled My Underground American Dream, My True Story as an Undocumented Immigrant Who Became a Wall Street Executive. Joining me here is Julissa Arce, the author of the book. She's a graduate of the University of Texas and became a vice president at Goldman Sachs before leaving the financial industry a short time ago. She is now the co-founder and chairman of the Ascend Educational Fund. It's a nonprofit group which helps immigrants achieve higher education. Um, thank you so much for joining us, uh, Julissa. Let's talk a little bit about your book in which you wrote that you didn't grow up in poverty as some would have expected, um, particularly in the case with undocumented immigrants from Mexico. What's the main thing that you want people to walk away from, to walk away with rather, after uh, reading your book? Yeah, I want people to walk away knowing that undocumented immigrants are people just like everyone else that have dreams and ambitions and aspirations and that we come to this country to give of our talent and of our labor and not to take anything away from from a country that we love. We believe in this country so much that, uh, in, in, not in my case, but in many cases, people are willing to risk their very lives to come here and that's how much we love and believe in this country. Talk to us a little bit about your childhood in terms of what was your upbringing like, if you can compare for us what it was like before before you came to the United States and when you came into the United States, at what age were you aware um, of your status uh, as an immigrant and how that shaped your, your personality and drive? Yeah, I was I was 11 years old when I came to live in, in the U.S. and living in Mexico, I had a really I had a really nice life. My parents were working really hard in the U.S. to provide me with the kind of life that I had in Mexico. Um, and I came here with a tourist visa, which you know it's another thing that people uh, when people think of undocumented immigrants, we think that everybody crossed the border uh, illegally and that by building a wall, we're going to uh, we're going to solve the problem of immigration. When 40 percent of the undocumented immigrants in this country actually came here with a visa that expired. In my case, I was 14 years old when my visa expired. And from that moment on, and I talk a lot about this in the book, that from that moment on, being a 14-year-old girl, I had to keep in mind my immigration status for every single decision that I made from that point forward. So it does become a very difficult, um, it, it becomes very difficult to navigate your life as an undocumented immigrant in the country because, um, because of the rhetoric, because there are very little resources um, available to us. And, and what is, how did you go from being an undocumented immigrant to the status that you have now? Yeah, um, so I actually married a, a U.S. citizen, a longtime boyfriend, and because he was a U.S. citizen, I was able to adjust my status. And one technicality is that because I crossed the border, because I never crossed the border um, illegally, that's why I was able to adjust my status. So when people talk about why don't you just make yourself legal and why don't you get in, back, in the back of the line, the reality is that that line doesn't exist for millions of people. I was one of the very lucky ones that there was a process for me to become uh, a permanent resident and eventually a citizen after I married. And I'm curious to get your thoughts on this current election cycle where immigration has been at the forefront of some of the rhetoric we're hearing from the Republican uh, side. What has bothered you the most about what you've been hearing this election cycle from both Democrats and Republicans? Yeah, The thing that's most bothersome is that we are using immigrants and we are using the issue of immigration as a scapegoat. We're using immigrants as a scapegoat for a lot of real critical issues that are happening in our country. And so we're not looking deeper into issues that we should be looking at because we're so focused on immigrants and how we can blame them for all of the, the issues in our country when in reality immigration can actually be an asset and a way for us to improve our economy. If we were to pass immigration reform, millions of dollars would be added into our economic system. Jobs would be created for American citizens. And so immigration really needs to be looked at from the standpoint of how can we use immigrants and immigration as an asset to our country rather than, than using it as something to blame all of our issues on. And, for, and from both sides, we need to demand we need to demand more and we need to demand that the promises that are made um, f to pass immigration reform and to address the immigration uh, issue is it actually happens when uh, when the next president uh, comes into office. You say that Democrats don't keep their promise when it comes to immigration reform. Are you leery about the promises that have been made on the campaign trail so far by uh, Secretary Clinton and others? 
Um, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that um, that this time we will actually be able to press, uh, pass immigration reform. And I and I urge people to register to vote and 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 to come out um, and vote not just in the presidential election, but in the midterms and and going forward because we need more than than the president. Of course, is going to set the agenda, but we also need a Congress that is going to work together to address and pass immigration reform. Otherwise, we're going to have uh, the same thing as we've had the last eight years. You recently wrote an op-ed in which you said that you. You are going to vote for your community. It, what does that exactly mean? Yeah, that I'm. I I was. This is the, this is going to be the first time in my life that I am going to vote uh, for president in this country, and it's an incredible honor and a privilege to do that. And I know that there are millions of people who don't have a voice, and so I want to use my vote to give them a voice. And I talk a lot about this in the book. That this this book isn't just about me. It really is about opening the eyes of people to see us as people, and for for people to be able to connect with us at a human level. Um, and so that's what I mean by it. I'm going to use my vote as a way to give a voice to the millions of people who don't have one, just like I didn't have a voice for such a long time. All right, Julissa Arce, thank you very much for joining us, uh, and uh, congratulations on your first vote as an American citizen. Thank you. That'll do it for me this hour. I'm Ayman Mohideen. Thanks for watching. Coming up on AM Joy, Donald Trump's tangled web of international business relationships and the potential for huge conflicts of interest if he were to become president. That's next on AM Joy.